DynamoDB provides two primary methods to create and update data in a table, put item and update item methods. Put item is used to insert new items and also overwrite existing items with the same primary key. On the other hand, update item allows targeted attribute modifications on an item and also insert new items. Understanding the differences between the update and the put item operations is crucial for effective data management when using DynamoDB tables. In this video, let's learn exactly that, the differences between update and put item. Hello, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Without much delay, let's straight get into understanding the differences between update and put item in DynamoDB table. Let's switch over to Visual Studio where I have an existing solution that I have been using in my DynamoDB videos before. This is a solution that I started using when I wanted to explain the different query formats in DynamoDB. This is an ASP.NET API solution with the default weather forecast controller. So we have the program.cs, the weather forecast.cs and also the weather forecast controller. In this, we have different methods that shows the different capabilities of DynamoDB and the different ways you can query them. I will make sure a link to the videos that uses this solution in the descriptions below. Now in this video, we will be adding on new methods to this controller to see the differences between update and put item. As a quick recap, we have the weather forecast controller and we inject in the iDynamoDB context, which is the high level API in the .NET SDK and also the iAmazonDynamoDB. This is the low level API that's provided by the .NET SDK. Both of them are part of the same NuGet package, which I have already added to this project. So if you look at dependencies and packages, you can see the AWS SDK .DynamoDB v2. Now, if you're using the DynamoDB context, it provides one method to save and update data. That is the save async method. Now this abstracts over the update and put item and behaves in a single way. It just overrides existing items if they exist or creates new items. Now, when using DynamoDB, there are lots of features like filter expressions, condition expressions, etc. That's not supported in the DynamoDB context or the high level API. In these cases, we need to switch down into the lower level API so that we can use the full capability of DynamoDB. Now, I have shown these different examples in the video on querying in DynamoDB and also projection expressions, condition expressions, filter expressions, etc. You can look at the description to see the relevant links for those videos. Now, in this video, since the primary intent is to understand update item and put item, we will be using the low level API. So let's scroll down all to the bottom of this controller and add in a new method right before the delete method. Now you can see there is an existing method which says post if not exist, which already use the put item async. So let's copy and paste this and get started from there. So let's rename this and name this as put item request. Let's also rename the method to put item request. Now in this case, let's remove the condition expression and also the expression attribute names since we don't have any expression anymore in this request. Now this is a simple put item request that's made on the DynamoDB client onto the DynamoDB database. The put item request creates a new item or replaces an old item with a new item. So if the item has the same primary keys as the new item already exists in the specified table, the new item will completely replace the existing item. You can also do conditional put operations, just like we saw in the example that we copy and pasted. So you can look at the condition expressions video to understand more about condition expressions. Now the put item request has different parameters, which is what we saw in the put item request class. Now this has two required properties, which is the item and also the table name. So you can see the required is yes on both these attributes. Now there are a few legacy properties as well on this particular class, which you can safely ignore and use the newer expression properties. So you can go through this list if you want to understand all the properties in detail. 
However, in this video, we will be just using the table name and the item which are the required properties. Now in this case, I have a weather forecast data which is coming in as part of the controller input. I overwrite the date to be the just the date part so that I ignore the time. The DynamoDB table that we use in this example is the DynamoDB weather forecast table that we have created in the previous videos. Now if you go into tables in the AWS console, you can see under the weather forecast that this has a partition key of city name and the sort key as date, which is why I remove this time part of the date property as soon as it comes in into the API endpoint. Now for the put item request, we need to pass the whole item that needs to be saved in DynamoDB as a dictionary of string attribute value pairs. Now to convert this to that format, we can use the document model in DynamoDB SDK. The document class from the DynamoDB NuGet package exposes a from JSON method which takes in a JSON object and converts it into a document object. The document object has a to attribute map function which then converts it into the dictionary string attribute value pair. So this is exactly what I'm using to create the item in this particular case. Now once we have the item and the table name specified, we can complete the put item request. So let's put a breakpoint here and run this and see this in action. The application is running and we have the swagger endpoint. So if we scroll down, we can see the put item request. So let's expand this and let's populate some of the properties in this object. So let's say try it out. Let's provide the city name. So let's call this as Brisbane, which is the current city I am in. And let's pass in the date. Now in this case, it's default today's date. So let's take a copy of this as well so that we can use this in subsequent request. Now let's click execute and this posts the request to this API endpoint. Now the date is overwritten to be just the date part and then it uses the document object to convert it into the document type. It then makes the put item request as expected. And this is successfully completed and it returns back to the Swagger endpoint. Now if we switch back to the DynamoDB table, let's go into explore table items and let's query this table with the partition key of Brisbane and run this. So here we have the item that we have just inserted, which is for Brisbane 2023-612. So let's navigate into that and you can see this has created all the properties in this particular item that we passed in from the API request. Now this is exactly all the properties that we have in our weather forecast class. So if we navigate to the weather forecast object, you can see all the properties in here. Now, if I was to modify the request and make it again, so let's navigate back and keep the Brisbane and the date exactly the same. And let's change the temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius and click execute. Now, in this case, it hits the breakpoint again. So let's continue the execution and let's navigate back to DynamoDB. Now, if I refresh this item, you can see this has changed the temperature C to be 20. While it has done that, it has also overwritten all the properties in here. Now, since it's same, it is looking similar. However, let's say somebody else made an update on this item. So let's say they changed the string summary to be string updated. And let's save this from here in the DynamoDB itself. Now, if I navigate back to that item and refresh this, you can see this is summary string update. However, if we make a request again from the Swagger UI, by just changing the temperature, let's say 25 and execute, this is going to overwrite the entire item. So if we navigate back to DynamoDB and refresh this, the summary property is again changed to string because that is exactly what we passed in the new request. The temperature is also updated as you can see here. So anytime you're making the put item request, you need to send in the entire object and that will completely replace that item in DynamoDB. This is something you have to consider because you could be overwriting other people's changes just like we saw in this example. Now, if I come back to the Visual Studio, let's stop this. And let's say we also remove one of these properties from this weather forecast class. So let's take summary, for example, and let's comment this out, which means the summary property doesn't exist anymore. Now, if I run this application again, and if we navigate to the put item request, let's say try it out. Let's paste the JSON object that we had copied before, which is exactly for the same date. Now this summary property no longer exists in the C-sharp class. So let's also remove this from here. 
and let's execute that again. Now this hits the API and runs successfully. So if I come back to DynamoDB and refresh this, you can see that the summary property is also removed from the DynamoDB item. This is because the last request that's made to DynamoDB in the put item request overwrote the entire item. Now, since that didn't have the summary item, it removed that as well. Now, using the put item request is quite straightforward because all you need to do is provide the entire object that you need to save and it overwrites in DynamoDB. However, one thing you need to keep note is that you need to have the entire object all the time when you want to make an update to DynamoDB table. Now, whatever you pass in will be the latest value for that item. You can add restrictions to the update using condition expressions, which I do walk through in my condition expressions video. Now that is a good way to ensure data consistency and to make sure that you're not overriding other people's changes or other applications changes to the same object in the table. Now that we understand how the put item works, let's look at what update item provides us. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio. Let's stop this and let's create a new method. So let's copy and paste this for starters and let's rename this to be update item request. Let's also rename the method. So let's make this as update item request. Now I don't need any of these properties. So let me remove them. And I will also not be passing the weather forecast data because for the update item, it is more to selectively update specific properties. So let's assume we have the string city name and also a string date for which we want to perform the operation on. Now, in this particular case, I'm just interested in updating the summary of this item. So let's pass in the summary as well. Now in here, let's create a new update item request. So let's make a request object, new update item request. Like before, there are a few properties that's mandatory, especially the table name. So let's specify that as the name of weather forecast. Let's specify the key property, which is basically the primary key of the item that we are trying to insert or update. So in this particular case, we already have the key as part of city name and date. So let's pass them as a dictionary of string attribute value pair. So we can use the name of weather forecast and let's pass in the city name in here. Now we also need to pass an attribute value so we can explicitly create that and pass in the city name. Let's also pass in the other name value pair, which is the date. So let's specify weather forecast dot date and let's specify the attribute value date like before. Now, since we have passed both these items, let's close the dictionary. So let's make sure to indent this so that this is more readable. Now we are passing the key for the city name and the date to target the item in the weather forecast table. Next, we need to specify the update expression, which is the expression that is used to update on DynamoDB. Now, in this particular case, all we need to do is pass the set expression. So let's specify set and let's specify summary is equal to and let's specify a placeholder value summary. So we need to pass the value for this as part of the expression attribute values. We saw this before when we explored the different querying formats in DynamoDB. Anytime you need to pass a value in the update expression, you need to specify a placeholder and pass the appropriate value for that in the expression attribute values. So in this case, let's pass a new dictionary of string attribute and let's also specify the key value pair. In this case, the key is going to be summary. So let's specify summary and let's pass the value which is going to be a new attribute value and let's pass summary inside that. Let's format this again. And let's make sure to close the brackets on the update request item. Now we can use the DynamoDB client and make the request to update item. So let's specify update item async and pass in the request. Now in this update item request, as you can see, we are only setting the summary property of the object. It's selectively updating one of the properties on this item. Now this item doesn't exist already. It will create a new item with just these three properties. So let's run this and see this in action. So let's put a breakpoint and press F5. So let's scroll down 
go to update item request and click try it out. Let's specify Brisbane. Let's specify the date as 2023. Um, let's specify June and let's specify 13 as the date. And let's specify the summary as new item because I know that this item doesn't exist. So let's click execute and continue execution. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the request is successful. Go back to DynamoDB and let's specify the query again. So let's specify the query and specify the city as Brisbane and run this. You can also mark the sort descending if you want to see the last value first. So let's run this again and you can see there is a 2023 June 13 record in here. Now, since I explicitly specified it as string, it is using that as the key. We can also specify as 06 and 13 to avoid any confusions. But in this case, you can navigate to this item and you can see we have created a new item with just those three properties. So you can see it's just the summary that is getting written. Now, if I navigate back to the Swagger and make the request again, so let's say new item updated and let's click execute again and continue the execution. Now, if I navigate back to DynamoDB item and refresh this, you can see this property was updated. Now you can also make updates on existing items. So let's navigate back to the item that we created before. So let's specify Brisbane, sort descending and run and navigate to the item that we created in the put item request and let's copy the date from here. So let's navigate back to the swagger and let's replace this date and create a new summary from update request and execute this. Now this item already exists. So if I navigate back to the DynamoDB and refresh this property, you can see this has added the summary property back again, and it has inserted this new summary from update request. I can also selectively update just this by making a request again. So let's say new summary and simply execute this. Now this is going to override that existing property with this new value. So if I navigate back and refresh this item, you can see this text is now new summary. So we've just targeted that specific property and updated only that in this particular item. Now with the update item request, you don't require to have all the properties of that object. All you need is the partition key and the sort key, which are the primary keys, and also the details of the properties that you want to update. You can also make multiple updates by passing in comma separated values. So you can say summary is new summary, comma, where the type is something else as well. Now in both these cases, we're using update and put items, you need to make sure of data consistency. So you should make sure that the object that you're writing to is in the same state as you have read and shown it in your application. Now you can use the DynamoDB condition expressions for that and set up a condition expression on the date time and specify that the last updated date time should be exactly the same. To learn more about that, I highly recommend checking out my condition expressions video, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now the update item request is a great candidate to be using in task-based UIs where you want to perform specific tasks on these objects. So it could be just specifying the temperature or just updating the summary or marking off checkboxes, etc., like that. You could be updating more than one property in the same update item request. I hope this helps you to understand the differences between the update item and the put item request. Each of these requests has its own advantages and it can be used based on the type of the application and the UI that you're showing for the user to interact with this application or even for the API endpoints, just like we saw in these examples. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.